there were certain things and times in South Africa which <laughs> raised hairs. Um, you know, not being the safest of places to grow up. At one stage, it was rated the crime capital of the world. Um, it was overtaken then by the favelas, um, you know, which has obviously turned into one of the most dangerous places, if not the still the most dangerous place. Um, but crime was quite rife. Um, your day-to-day -day living and life expectation was shorter than normal, um, just due to the fact that there was murders, killings, stabbings, rapes, um, everything's going on. Um, just because the value of life to certain people was so minimal. So you'd have to watch your back. <laughs> yeah, um, there's been a few incidents. Uh, I tend to forget a lot of them, but um, reminded quite frequently by people, oh, do you remember the time this happened or that happened? Which is quite funny. I laugh at it where people are like frowning. Um, there's been times from when there was a carjacking that took place. Uh, it was a dark uh, night and um, I had returned back from the, the video store to uh, um, you know, enter, enter the property at my cousin's house where we were going to watch a, a DVD that we had just rented. And uh, I'd seen some movement in the car that was parked alongside the road. Um, approached the car and out popped a guy with a sharpened Allen key that uh, he had actually gained entry to the vehicle um, with. And uh, he, he threatened to stab me, so instantly you know, put my hands up, um, you know, protecting my face and my, my body in, in a stance where I could just defend myself. And um, he reached over, over the back of my shoulder and actually stabbed me in the back with that, that Allen key. So um, that was one of the experiences. You know, I, I demobilized him, took the weapon off of him, um, pretty much sorted him out as, <laughs> as you need to, um, just dealt with that. But it's that negative that um, you were speaking about that I've, I've taken and turned into a positive um, through all the experiences that I've had. There was a time where I got, you know, set, I say set on fire, I got caught in a fire. Um, I, I was on a rowing camp for school where we had you know, taken a walk down um, through, through an open field stopped at the bridge over the water, throwing a few rocks in there, just killing some time and chatting to each other. And as we had decided to come back to the main camp, uh, a fire had burned through in those open fields where we were originally passing. Um, and due to a rugby injury and a torn ligament in my ankle, I couldn't jump over a fence that everyone was jumping over for a new route to, to get back to the camp. And I had started making my way around um, when the wind blew and everything burst back into flames with recombustion. Um, I got caught in the middle of the fire, flames surrounding me two, three meters high. Um, I had to turn around and, and run, pretty much to save my life. Uh, I ran out of my flip-flops, melting my toes together. Um, pretty much close on, caught on fire myself. All my board shorts started melting to my body. And um, yeah, I managed to, to, to get to a piece of safety on a, on a patch of sand where I so thought I was safe. Um, but the fire carried on burning around us. So one of my friends actually returned back in, threw me over his shoulder and, and, and ran the rest of the way out with me, um, where eventually I had to be rescued by a firefighter, um, who then obviously took me back to the ambulance, who took me to hospital for further operations. And um, that demobilized me for pretty much the good end of a year, uh, where I landed up in a wheelchair for nine months and, and crutches for about three, four months thereafter, learning how to walk again. Um, yeah, so I was completing, um, which was my final year within the military as part of the um, adventurous training team at Netherhaven Airfield Base, uh, where I was a uh, junior parachute instructor. And um, we had done numerous amounts of jumps before. And on this occasion, I was actually out with one of the other um, students at the time teaching him his formation skydiving um, and we were assessing him on one of his formation skydiving levels and near the end of it um, I turned to obviously track away from him um, being heavier than him I had sunk out he obviously turned in the same direction as myself so I couldn't deploy my parachute otherwise I would have wrapped him up like a present and uh, we both would have come tumbling to the ground so I turned the opposite direction um, to look up before I could deploy my parachute again, and he had turned that same direction again. So in panic, I turned a full 360, got as far away from him as I could, and pulled my parachute. At this stage, I was closing the, the limitations of what you need to deploy your parachute. As it opened, um, 
unfortunately, yeah, it was a malfunction with two snap lines. So um, I came twirling towards the ground um, with an unstable parachute above my head. So quick split, se split second decision making, um, had to cut that parachute away and ride down on my reserve. But by the time my reserve had deployed, I had about a second or two to put my fingers through the toggles um, and flared to come into safety. Um, speaking about the positives taken from that, it was my wife's first skydive that same day uh, with a tandem instructor friend of mine. Um, I didn't inform her of the malfunction I had previous to that. She arrived and um, we both went up. We were all chirpy and singing and dancing and having fun and jokes and laughs. Jumped out, um, I managed to jump out alongside them, held a hand in the sky on the way down, got a photo from one of my friends that jumped out with us, carried on, completed the skydive. When we got to the bottom, asked her how she enjoyed it. She was over the moon, great thrilled, until I told her about the malfunction I had previously and she vowed never to go skydiving again. But since then I've taken her skydiving and she's thoroughly enjoyed it. So just taking the positives out of it, you know, I mean, taking her for a first skydive, we've got a beautiful picture of us two in the sky, um, you know, holding hands. So yeah, there, there, there's a lot that I can take away from all of my experiences. Um, the heart attack was another one, or oh, stroke. I, I don't think they've actually defined exactly what it was, but um, during my time in the Marines, I encountered a stroke slash heart attack. I was just in the gym lifting a few, few weights and my vision started to darken um, and eventually totally black out. I thought well, this is a bit odd, you know, my eyes are open and I can't see anything. Um, I got taken down to the med bay where they took me to the Royal Eye Infirmary. Um, they checked my eyesight out, made sure the retinas were still attached. Um, they said my eyes were fine, but I couldn't see a thing. Um, they obviously then took me to the hospital where they ran a numerous amount of tests on me. And they asked if I had brought a bag for overnight because I had just suffered a heart attack slash stroke and um, they wanted to do further tests, if not operate. Um, later the following morning, they informed me that I was going to have to undergo surgery for closing of a valve, um, a PFO closure within my heart. And um, that took place. It was a 50-50 chance of surviving that operation. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's go ahead. Um, I'm on the positive side of 50%, so I'm sure we'll get through that one. Uh, woke up after the operation and um, yeah, the best part about that story is that's where I actually met my wife um, in the hospital. So. It was pretty much a stroke of luck.